God bless all my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. You know, as for these teachings, many might not care. Many might not have an interest to hear these things. But the world, the word of God wasn't preached by people who were disloyal, but they were loyal. The apostles and the holy brethren that came before us, they wasn't timid. They wasn't worldly. The reason why we have the truth that we have today that we could read in the word is because it was people that was like myself that stood on the truth that walked in the truth and that lived the truth. This is the reason why these people names are written in the book of life. This is the reason why you see God allow them to be um, mentioned in scripture. So many probably don't care what I'm saying, don't care about these teachings, but there are people who truly will and that wants to go to heaven and to truly receive salvation and you know in life that if there's something that's offered if there's a direction that you must go in you must do work to get there if you want to eat what do you do in order to eat okay if you need finances what do you do god made the world to where we have to use our brains, you know, our bodies, our muscles, right, to provide and do different things. So there's no way that God is going to throw the devil and his demons, the, the, the false messiah, the, the false prophet, the antichrist and the beast and all these people are going to go to hell. Because you walk in the earth and saying that I believe in Jesus, right? I'm not perfect. I'm not what I need to be. Then what would be the reason that you are allowed to go to heaven and others aren't? Why would many people go to hell? Why would it be fair for you to get to go to heaven and the rest of the world goes to hell because you're only saying Jesus' name? I'm, I'm just saying like, you know... I know there has to be some, you know, your conscience can't be all the way defiled, right? There has to be some reasoning in you. So there has to be some sound judgment. I'm just asking y'all to listen to what I'm saying. Why is it fair that these people who claim to be Christians and live in sin, right, claim they make mistakes, but is every non-believer committing sins the same sins every day? Is every atheist, is every Muslim, is every Buddhism person committing the same sins every day? Don't every human being on this earth have a conscience? The Book of Romans tells you the Gentiles do by nature what's written in the law, right? So that means that God gave everyone a conscience to know good from evil. So all I'm asking y'all is this. What makes it right? The Bible said that God is a righteous judge, right? He said he respects no man's persons. He doesn't have no favorites, right? Remember, Gentiles wasn't even allowed to receive salvation until Christ came. Before in the Old Testament, it was nothing but the Jews, the Hebrews, the Israelites, which are the same people. It wasn't until Acts, right, chapter 10, that Jesus, God, sent Peter to Cornelius. And this is the first record that we have of a Gentile being baptized with the Holy Ghost as the Jews, right? In Acts 2, verse 2. So it, it goes to show you that God's not a respecter of person. So all I'm saying, if God is a righteous judge, right, then what is the point of heaven and hell, right? What's the point of, of people dying and going to hell, you know, for their sins? When you're committing sins too, and you're saying, oh, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not where I used to be. There's nobody perfect. But you got non-believers who are working on themselves, 
trying to do better. As they feel. You got people who used to drink alcohol, who are non-believers, who are sober now. You got people who are non-believers who went to prison and, and got out and never went back. So they stopped committing certain sins. They don't even know that sins. They just stopped committing. They stopped breaking certain laws that are, are a lot of laws are connected to what the Bible says. Right. Thou should not kill still. Right. So they, they these unbelievers have it in themselves to say, hey, I'm going to stop murdering. I'm going to stop killing. I'm going to stop committing adultery. That's what the Bible says. So why is it right that you get to go to heaven when you're just as the same as a non-believer professing to be a Christian? Just make it make sense. Make it be fair. How is it fair? You're saying you're serving a God that is loving, that is kind, that is just. The Bible says you see, you know, the patience of Job and see how the Lord was pitiful and tender in mercy. Why would God throw babies and people into hell for sins when nobody is perfect, as y'all saying? You're saying that everybody makes mistakes. So you're telling me that all you got to do is say Jesus name and, 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 and try to do better and you get to go into heaven? So you can be the same as a non-believer. There's even some non-believers who got more self-control than you. More discipline than you. So why would he let you go in and not allow them to go in? I'm just saying, make it make sense. Because the Jews in the Old Testament fasted. They paid tithes and offerings. They went to the synagogues and the temples faithfully. They acknowledged God publicly. They read the laws in the books of the prophets habitually, daily. They, they, they gathered together on the Sabbaths and, and read out of the laws and the Ten Commandments and, and the, the books of the prophets. So why didn't they be in good standing with God when they did all these things? Right? Because they were still sinners. In Matthew 7, these men came before the Lord and they said, Lord, Lord. He said, many going to say on that day, Lord, Lord. Right? He said, but many, on, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. Right? And it, then remember, they were trying to make their case with Jesus in Matthew 7 and the 20th verses. They said, have we not? Right? Trying to make their case. He said, I never knew you. So they were saying because that, you know, uh, uh, we felt that we'd done these things or we felt that we were doing these things in our imagination. Wouldn't this allow us to come in? That's what they, that's what they were saying. Remember? Because why would they say that? Why would they get to the point of saying, have we not done these things in your name? Done miracles in thy name? Prophesied in thy name? Why, were, why are they saying that to him? What conversation took place to where these people are before the judgment seat of Christ, right? And they're, 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 they're making their appeal by saying, but haven't I worked for you for, for 20 years? Haven't I swept these tables? Haven't I washed these dishes? You know, and you're just going to fire me. Why, why were they appealing to him like that? Because they was wrong. And they was trying to, you know, find a way. Right? To look for mercy. By creating what they wanted in their imagination. But what did Jesus say after they made their appeal? What do you say? Depart from me. I never knew you. You that work iniquity. So clearly these people, listen to me, in America right now, right? You have 200 million people who claim to be in Christianity. That means 100 million don't claim to be in Christianity. 
right? They just whatever other stuff that's out there. So you got people today who do not acknowledge Jesus as their Lord and Savior. These are facts. So in Matthew 7, in the 20th verses, these men came before Jesus and said, Lord, Lord. They called him Lord. So that mean that they showed reverence. They called him by the name that true Christians call him. But even though they called him the way a true Christian will call him, even though they knew the name that a true Christian will call him, so they had access to know these things. He said, depart from me. I never knew you, even though you know about me, even though you know my name, even though you're called. He did the same thing what happened with Saul. When Saul was first blinded in the book of Acts, Apostle Paul, but before his name was Paul, his name was Saul, right? When he was blinded, this is what he said. He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, because he wasn't his Lord yet. The Bible said that no man can say Jesus Christ is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So that means unless you have the Holy Spirit, you can't acknowledge him as Lord because you are in the flesh. And the Bible said if you don't have the spirit, you're not none of his. See? So when Paul said, Saul said in the book of Acts, when he was blinded on the road to Damascus, he said, who art thou, Lord? With his eyes closed. Who art thou, Lord? He knew of his name. He knew what Christians called him. Ananias and Sapphira, they seen Christians selling their possessions and selling their houses and their land. And they seen them presenting them to the apostles and laying at their feet. It was mentioned in Acts 2. It was mentioned in Acts 4. So that means that they was aware of what true Christians were doing. And they tried to copy it. Paul was a Pharisee. One who persecuted Christians. A man that was there when Stephen got stoned and killed. He held their jackets, the apostle Paul, before he became an apostle. He was there. But on the road to make us, being such an enemy to the cross, being the enemy towards God, he called Jesus Lord. Paul did. He said, who art thou, Lord? Then Jesus said in the book of Acts, I am Jesus whom thou persecute. That's facts. So that means that Paul heard what true Christians called him. And Ananias, Sapphira, seen what true Christians did. And they tried to imitate those things. And they died. For moving about in mischief. So in Matthew 7. These men came before Jesus. And said, Lord, Lord. They called him Lord. They didn't say, hey, are you Jesus? Are you the Lord and Savior? Are you the Messiah? Are you the anointed one, the Christ? The only begotten son of God? They didn't say that. They talked as if they were familiar with him and they knew him and they were living for him. But what did he say? Depart from me. I never, not that I once knew you, not that you were running well, but you, you grew wary. Not that this and that happened. As the false Christians say, he said, I never knew you. But these were people who mentioned actual things that men of God did. That walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. They mention prophecy. They mention miracles. They mention these things that you can find in scripture. So that mean that they were. They knew certain things about the Bible. They knew certain words that was in the Bible. Because they spoke it. They didn't say hey didn't I build a house in your name? Didn't I you know uh, uh, go to the gladiator matches in your name? Didn't I go inside, you know, didn't I, uh, I, I build a, a chariot in your name? They said the things that true men of God were done. Look, look at Matthew 7 and 20 verses. They say, have we not done these things? 
So that means that they were able to speak certain things that was written for men of God to do. But they didn't do those things. They were never connected to Jesus. So Jesus replies and says, I never knew you. You know of me. You heard of me. Because who hasn't? The Bible said it went out in all of the earth. <laughs> you understand? Even if you look in the book of Acts, it was like, we know that it's, it's, it's spoken against everywhere. They was talking about uh, when Paul when Paul got to, um, to uh, Rome and he was talking to the Jews. It was like, we didn't get any letters from Jerusalem or Judea, you know. But we, we, we heard that it's, this, what, you, what you believe in is spoken against everywhere. So people heard. It's not hard for people to pick up on things. So the point of me saying all of that is that they couldn't get in the kingdom of God because of sin. No matter how y'all don't want to accept that, no matter how... Let me ask you a question. I know you believe in what you believe because of, um, you know, what you've been told. You've been taught, but ask yourself, do you really feel that God is with you? Do you really feel you feel his comfort 24-7? Do you get every answer you need when you're praying? Do he direct you? Do he speak to you? Do, you? do he treat you the way he treated the apostles? Do he treat you the way he treated them prophets in the Old Testament? Is he telling you before your children get sick? Is he showing you before somebody breaks to your car? Is he telling you, you know, what season what shift is about to take place in your life? Is he directing your steps every day? Is he warning you? Right? Is he telling you what your wife is thinking without you even knowing what she said before she even speaks to you? Is he telling you what your husband is thinking before he even speaks to you? Do you know your kids are looking on the internet at things they shouldn't? Do you see your children's behavior? Without using natural vision when you're not there. Is he telling you what's to come in the world? Is he showing you what's going to take place? Do you Are you ignorant to Satan devices? Do you understand how demons operate and how they work? Do you understand God's grace? Do you understand when God's grace starts to fade over people? Do you understand the different graces that is old, the different graces over people's life? Can you see when people are coming to the end of their life? Are you connected with him? Do you really feel that you know God? I'm not talking about what you're reading. I'm talking about intimacy with you and him. As you see in scripture. No. So you go off of what your imagination tells you. The same way before you claim to be a Christian, you imagine things. He would say, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. So all I'm saying is, is that these men called him Lord. And many people on this earth call him Lord. And that wasn't enough to get him into the kingdom of God. He said, depart from me. So I don't care what y'all want to say about we, we, no one is perfect. I, I got you. But how do you feel when you read that verse? And they could not get in because of sin. I don't, I don't understand. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that because you're a Christian or you claim Jesus, that you would never go to hell because of your sins. It never says that. Them brothers all say not to sin. Y'all going to get tired of just reciting 1 John 1 and 8. 1 John 1 and 6. You got one verse that they, mis they misinterpret. And all these brothers are saying the same thing about not sinning. They all saying the same thing. But you got one verse that you misinterpret. Oh, any man say he has no sin. Right? And then the next chapter he's saying don't sin. So so if I tell you drink water, if you say that you don't, if anyone say they don't drink water, anyone say haven't drank water is a liar. Anyone that uh, drinks water is a liar. Then I say the next, the next, the next text message I say drink, don't, uh, you better not drink water. Isn't that what John said? In John, in First John chapter two, he says, "Sin not." In First John three, he says, "If you sin, you're a child of the devil." So explain to me what he's talking about in First John chapter one. Y'all weird and strange. This is why I make these videos because I believe I don't care if y'all don't want to hear it. I don't send no invites out. 
when I make these videos. I speak forth the truth because I'm loyal to God. The word of God that I speak today wasn't because people was timid and they feared man or they obeyed man. It was because they believed in God and they loved God and spoke the truth. These are the facts. There's nowhere where you can show me where we celebrated Easter as Christians. These are false Christians. That's why only a false Christian would believe that we can't stop sinning. When you can stop sinning on your own without even being a Christian. What are you talking about? You got non-believers who stop certain sins without even knowing that this was a sin in the Bible. You got non-believers who, who are uneducated in scripture who will stop fornicating and get married. And, it, and they never slept with somebody else again. You got many atheists that are not breaking the law. You got many atheists that are not doing things that are, are, that are co not committing certain sins. They're sinning, right? But some sins that they commit, they like, I don't want to do those things anymore. Because they got self-control. That's one thing that's given by the Holy Spirit. So all I'm here to do is just, is just bring shame to the false Christians because they make it seem as if God doesn't have any power and Satan overpowers God, right? Because they're saying that the flesh is weak. The Bible never talks about the flesh being weak when you have the spirit and as a Christian. The Bible says the flesh is crucified. The body is dead, right? They clearly say that. Whether you understand it or not, that's what they tell you. He only told Peter that the flesh was weak and the spirit was willing, right? Peter didn't have the Holy Ghost in the four Gospels. And he wrote spirit in a lowercase s. Right? So, this is my thing. You can't talk to nobody. Because they love to believe in what they want to believe in. That's why my videos, I don't bring nobody up here. I don't have no debates. I speak the truth. Easter is not in the Bible for a Christian to celebrate. The reason why it was mentioned in the Bible... Because it was celebrated long before people even became Christians. There was many Greeks living in Jerusalem at the time of, of Jesus' death, right? And resurrection. And the time of the book of Acts. There was many people who worshipped many false gods. Remember when Paul and Barnabas was in a certain uh, 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 city and they, they wrote, they had a, a statue, they had a, a, they had a written and said to the unknown God, right? And it was calling uh, Paul and Barnabas planet names, right? So people was worshiping all type of false gods, even back in those days. They still do some of the similar things today, cutting on themselves. You know, you look at a lot of cultures, they do a lot of things that they did back in the Old Testament when it comes to these false gods still today. Same rituals, right? They're still killing animals for sacrifices. They're not even they're not even believers of God, but they do it. You understand? Because they seen these things, they heard these things. Satan manipulated the what's the name? The um the Bible. So the reason why so many false Christians, um, you know, the reason why so, so many uh, false Christians are believing in what these pastors are saying. It's a simple fact because they manipulate the Bible and there's no one there to, to tell them that what they're doing is wrong and there's no one there to bring forth the truth. So they get away with it. But that's why I make these videos. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear nothing. Y'all have to say I'm a different breed. Y'all, you got to go to somebody else with that foolishness. I'm not going to entertain it because you can't tell me what I'm saying is wrong. That's one thing about facts. Facts is not to be debated. It's not to be discussed. If you believe or you don't believe, then respectfully just get off my Facebook Live or my you or if you're watching me on YouTube. I'm not here to debate. I'm a believer. You understand? Google what the word believe mean. Get a dictionary. I'm faithful to Jesus. The same way Paul and him was. You understand? I don't want to hear nothing nobody gotta say. It ain't for the ain't for discussion. I'm, it's not for debate. The Bible says if any man seems to be contentious, we have no such customs. We, we don't argue and debate. Anymore. The Bible said, receive it with speaking faith, but not to doubtful disputations. You understand? You must believe. If you don't believe, then you got to accept the fact that this is not the light, this is not the religion for you. Because you're giving God a bad name. There's nowhere where Easter is mentioned in the Bible. Nowhere. 
for a Christian to celebrate. Okay? Tithes and offering is never mentioned in the Bible for a Christian to pay. Yes, it's mentioned in the Bible, but it's mentioned for its purposes. The word Easter is mentioned in the Bible, but it's mentioned for its purposes. They don't have anything to do with Jesus. Paul was trying to get back to Pentecost. In the fourth gospel, they were celebrating Passover. The Bible mentions Sabbath days. And this is, you got to understand why people think that tomorrow is uh, the uh, tomorrow is the day Christ rose. The Bible don't even tell you when Christ was born and they still make it December. They weren't even saying the months as we say today. So how can something be newly invented and then a, a date is put on that? So, so you're telling me somebody wrote a book a thousand years ago and then they're, they're talking about, they're talking about, um, you know, this person walked this road. I mean, this person walked and, and ate and did this, did that. So to a thousand years later, you come and start saying, oh yeah, that happened on Wednesday, right? Nowhere was it mentioned in the book. Anything about a day of the week. It said that person walked down this road. You done came and put a whole day when he walked down the road. You done said he walked on the road on Wednesday. You read the book for yourself. It says he walked on the road and ate berries. So a thousand years later, somebody comes up and say, oh, yeah, he was walking on the road eating berries on a Wednesday. Where are you getting that from? So all I'm trying to tell y'all, even though y'all don't want to hear it, even though y'all get mad at me, I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because it's not in my nature to wrestle against flesh and blood, right? So what you say, how you attack me, the things you feel, you don't understand love. This is why y'all think arguments is normal. Y'all think, somebody said, let's have a peaceful argument. You can't have a peaceful argument. Y'all been brainwashed. You don't argue about nothing. What does the Bible say argue? It says if any man sees to be contentious, we have no such customs. The Bible says we're not supposed to be contentious. It's not supposed to have strife. So when do we have time to argue? Argument means two people are not compassionate, right? I'm talking about if you look at a relationship and you got a man and woman arguing. What are they arguing about? One is, is stern, you know, stubborn, don't want to compromise, don't want to hear it. You know, think about it. They're angry. They're frustrated. They're not walking in the, in the fruit of the spirit. So this is why you understand these things happen in people's lives. Arguments is not normal. You understand? They don't, they don't, they don't yield peaceable fruit. Okay? So you've been taught these things. All I'm telling you is this. It's the right thing to do what I'm doing. It's not that, there's no other purpose, but it's the right thing to do. Because somebody is going to come. That's going to really want to live for God and receive from God and, and really have a relationship with God. And the words that I'm speaking, which are truthful and from the Bible, is going to help them and rescue them and save them. You understand? All the hypocrites and the heretics and the gainsayers and the forward people, they're going to come. But it, it doesn't faze me. This is why I keep making videos. No matter how many negative comments that I get, no matter how many people say mean things and bad things to me, you know, curse me and, 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 and use their private parts and say things to me, you know, all through my Facebook Messenger. I don't share none of this stuff with y'all. I just keep on soldiering on because I know what I'm doing is the right thing because what I'm speaking is facts. What I'm speaking is true. What I'm speaking is from the word of God. It's the right thing to do. We don't do it to get pats on the back. We don't do it to receive more grace from God or to be exalted by God. We do it because it shows the nature of God. God makes it rain on the just and on unjust. He sends a cool breeze to sinners and non-sinners. He sends water to the wicked and to the good. He got meat in the earth for the unrighteous and for the righteous. He got fruits and berries, beautiful cities and states and countries for the unrighteous and the righteous. So we're acting as children of God when we love those who hate us. Because the whole world, apart from those who are believers, despise my master. But he still shows love because he's bigger than their hate. He's bigger 
than their hearts because he's a creator. This is his creation. You understand? When, 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 when Ford and Chevy and Dodge and the people make those cars, they're not attached to what you're going to do when you got it. They provided transportation for you. They, they put a, the cigarette lighter in there so you could charge your phone. They put heated seats to warm you up when it's cold. They put brakes in a the car. They put trunk space. They did all these things so it can accommodate you. Then there's no strings attached. You understand? God put you here. He's not going to force you. But he will send people that's going to speak forth his word. And when you listen and you hearken and you truly take notes and you meditate and reflect off of what was spoken truthfully from God's word by the Holy Ghost, you will see that what is spoken is identical to what is written. So that's your warning. Brother Ronald, I'm not going to sit up here and beg you to change your life and beg you to live for God and beg you to do what's right. But I am by the grace of God and the compassion that I walk in, make these videos as often as God bids me, as he allows me to. You understand? Because it's the right thing to do. It doesn't matter how people respond to me. I've been raised to become numb to persecution. I've been raised to become numb to hate, to slander, to propaganda, colonomy, strife. I've been raised to not be affected by those things. Because Satan, at first I have to know my enemy. I have to study and understand how he operates to know how he, he works. He has no compassion. He has no love. The devil will wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if anybody gives in to the works of darkness, if anybody gives in to the nature of the devil, if anybody is operating in unrighteousness, right? Then I already know that they're under the influence of the devil. So I know that Satan from the Bible, from God's word, and from what has been given to me, secretly, mysteriously from God, to know about the adversary. So I know that there's no reasoning with the devil. So if you're possessed, you have a demon in you. If you want to quarrel and debate, strife, you're not going, there's no reasoning with you. Because Satan doesn't want to hear God's word. This is why when you tell people what God's word say, they don't never let you try. They'll never let me finish a, a sentence. They'll cut me off, taking me down, trying to take me down rabbit holes. Let me give you an instance. So somebody will say, well, you know, uh, uh, how do you know that, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, this and this, Jesus did that. And I say, well, well, right here it was written, you know, that, uh, um, you know, Jesus, um, you know, healed the blind man, you know, and you'll tell him, well, okay. And then I, I, I'm going to say, well, you know, then you see that blind Bartimaeus, et cetera. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. But, but look, what about how, you know, uh, the Bible say miracles are done away with? Oh, what about how, uh, the, um, I mean, not the, the Bible, they, they say, well, what about there's no more miracles or what about apostles being, there's no more apostles. The only true apostle was the 12 apostles. After that, there's no more apostles. See that, see the rabbit holes. They're not trying to receive. They're not trying to learn. Because when I was answering the first question, they asked me two more questions before I could even finish the first the first uh their first question, which scripture, chapter, and facts, right? So now they're at, now they're saying that there's no more miracles, right? But the Bible says in John 14 and 12 that the same works that he that he does that, that he do will do an even greater, right? And then we see after he died and he rose, the the these men of God did the same things and even greater, right? Now, I'm trying to answer and tell them about the other apostles beside the 12. Paul, Barnabas, Romans 16, mention other apostles as well. Then it tells you in Ephesians. This is later, this is way after the 12 disciples, the book of Ephesians was written by Apostle Paul. Remember, Paul came years later after the 12 apostles, right? So then Paul was an apostle. So then they'll say, well, well, apostles had to only see Jesus. I say no one scripture says that. So they'll keep taking you down rabbit holes. And before you can answer the question, they'll keep telling you. They'll keep coming out. Whoa, whoa, oh, uh, I just believe. Who care what you believe? I'm telling you what your religion says for you and what you're supposed to believe for your religion. They don't want to hear it. 
That's the darkness. That's the devil. It's just, it's strategic, and it's that's how they operate. I'm telling you, I don't want to hear what no. I'm telling you, I don't want to hear what nobody has to say. I didn't live this. You understand? I've been on this journey. I know how it goes. That's how they function. They'll tell you clearly. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, brother Ronald. Uh, Mark 16, uh, verse 16 to nine. That was added. You're like, but it says right here, scripture can be broken. And the Bible says, all scripture can inspire from the God. So the Bible said, how can faith come out here and hear by the word of God. So how can anybody have faith if the Bible has been altered? So like, you know, then, oh, well, you know, the, the women, 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 uh, the Bible said that the women ministered unto Jesus. See, it said they ministered. So they was preaching to Jesus. Why would they be preaching to Jesus when Jesus was, was teaching the gospel and, and fulfilling the law and preaching to others? What was anybody preaching to Jesus? The Bible say who had, who, who can instruct him? You see what I'm trying to say? So I can never answer what they're asking me. They'll just keep taking me down rabbit holes. They don't want to hear the truth. That's when the devil is in these people. When they just don't want to receive and don't want to listen. They always just come in with something else. Oh, I believe. I, but you don't understand that Satan flooded this world with falsehood. Y'all don't get that? You don't understand how crack hit the projects? They don't understand how meth is all in these places and, and heroin. You don't understand how it got flooded? It's the same thing Satan did. Everybody, they, if, if I can stop somebody right now and say, what you know about God? Oh, I, uh, Jesus, yeah, I believe it. he's in my heart. I wear my cross. My cross protects me from, 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 from demons or from the devil. The Bible don't say that. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, they'll say all this stuff that was taught, and it was taught purposely. So they could be in delusion and superstition and walk around with a false um, interpretation of God's word. So that's why God sends me. Because you can't say that what I'm saying is not true. Look at all my YouTube comments. Where do you see anybody putting me in my place for what for something I said that wasn't of God? Or I'm speaking things uh, penumptuously or I'm just making up stuff. Look at my comments. There's nobody that, that has that is, oh brother, you you said this, you said that. Nobody. Because all I'm doing is reciting. I'm educated by the grace of God. It's been given to me by God's power through the Holy Spirit. You understand? You're no match for God. You're not fighting against Brother Ronald. What I, I was a gang leader. Been shot 13 times. What 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 do I know about anything unless God gave it to me? I wasn't raised to do none of this. That's what I'm saying, Kelvin. It's the truth. But everybody, man, listen to me. People are speeding in their cars. Don't get me started now, y'all. Come on now. I bring in facts and logic, simplistic way to understand it. People speed in the car. And get poured over. Do they be mad? A lot of people be mad. Why they mad? Because they got to get a ticket for what they did that was wrong, right? I'm just saying. People speed in their vehicles. Knowing they speeding. And when the cop pulled them over, an authority figure. They call him everything but a child of God. They mad at him. I wasn't speeding. You know you were speeding. But you're mad because you have to face the reality of your choices. Who commits a crime and go into court and say, Your Honor, give me whatever you want to give me. Why they hire lawyers for? Like, what are y'all talking about? There's nowhere in this earth where people are just doing stuff and don't make excuses to justify what they're doing. Adam and Eve made excuses. There was a two, the first two men and women on earth. And when darkness came in them, they made excuses too. They ate the forbidden fruit. Adam said, this woman that you gave me, and Eve said, the serpent, <laughs> you understand? Even Cain made an excuse for when he killed Abel. I mean, he, 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 um, he, he, said, he didn't make an excuse. He, he told God that the punishment was too, too much for him to bear. You see? It's too grievous. Why he didn't just take it? Hey, I'm wrong. You see that? That darkness. So people are going to respond against me. Because they're not going to admit that they are troubled by the truth that I speak. Why? Why? Did, I'm asking, let me ask y'all this question: 
Why did they kill Jesus? Did he hurt anybody? Did he disrespect anybody? Did he, did he condemn people to hell? I mean, what did he do that was worthy of death? I'm just asking. Even Pilate said, this man is not worthy of death. It was the words that he spoke. But they never said, man, I hate what he's saying. Instead, the Bible said they plotted how they were going to destroy him. You see that? They never even wrote it down in the Bible that these men spoke out of their mouth how they were so affected by hearing the true word of God and, and their heart being exposed. But the Bible said they plotted on how they were going to get rid of him. But you can read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John for yourself and see that they were having conversations with Jesus and they were trying to catch him in lies. What kind of religious, righteous, supposed to be men are going to be trying to catch you in a, uh, a set of trap for you? What kind of God-fearing men are going to bribe one of your uh, disciples and followers to portray you? What kind of, what kind of God-fearing men walk around in mischief? Y'all don't see what, you, what Christ was dealing with? You remember how they, how they got, how they, how they, they got Jews to betray him, right? They bribed him and paid him money. You don't remember the Jews when Christ rose? They said, they, they told the soldiers to say that his disciples came and stole him by night. Y'all remember that? What kind of God-fearing men would bribe people and tell people to lie? What kind of God-fearing men would try to push Jesus Christ off a, off a cliff headlong. I'm just asking. What type of God friend men would do that? These were the people that Jesus was talking to on a daily basis. You see? But they never ever acknowledged the fact that they were offended because they heard the truth. The Bible mentioned how there was a fit, how uh, one of the disciples told Jesus that he offended them. Right. That's what the that's what the that's what the the, uh, the disciple told Jesus. But we never really see where the Bible mentions how they felt hearing his word. We know that that they were troubled by it, but we never seen them confess like, man, this guy is exposing us. He called us hypocrites. He telling the truth. We want him to go so we can get back to normal. Everywhere we gone, he's getting all the fame and recognition and, you know, people following him and he feeding them with fish and bread. He don't even charge them any money. He told his disciples, we were listening one day, he said, give freely as it was given freely. This man is not like us. People are coming to him. He's taking our shine. Who taught him? Who's his teacher? Is he not from Galilee? What good comes out of Galilee? Is this not the carpenter? Is his brother and sisters and mother not with us? He didn't go to Harvard. He didn't go to Yale. He don't got a doctor degree. I mean, why is everybody coming to him? How has he got this power? Surely it got to be the devil. He did a miracle. Oh, that's the power of Satan. That's the devil. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? They treat me the same way. Ain't nobody really going to be honest of how they feel because of my teachings. They are troubled and disturbed because it's the truth. And they've been a part of a lie all their life. If I'm wrong, show me my wrong and show me your right. If what you believe is biblical, prove it to me the way I prove it to the world. I don't take down none of my videos. They've been up here since 2015 since I started making these teachings by the grace of God, for the glory of God. I don't take nothing down. So show me where I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You telling me that I can't read? You telling me that I'm retarded or mentally challenged? And I can't see for myself with my own eyes? That there's nowhere where a Christian paid tithes and offerings. You don't see where Paul say women can't preach? nor teach. You don't see where he mentioned the church of God over and over. You don't see where it says in Acts 20, they purchased the church of God with his own, by his own blood. I mean, what am I looking at? 
So y'all tell me that I'm crazy. Okay, listen, I'm crazy, right? Well, bring your King James Version Bible to me. And I'm going to bring mine to you. And we're going to put them side by side. Because if I'm crazy, and I'm the only one that's seeing this, right? Then I, I need to be helped. Rescued. So let me see your Bible. And I'll bring mine. And I want to read your Bible because evidently you, you're making it seem that the Bible that I have is altered or twisted. Right? So I want to see your KJV and put it side by side. I want to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 in your Bible. Matter of fact, forget that. Can I ask some can I ask y'all a favor? Look, so you so you know it's not my Bible. Look, it's not come from it's not my Bible, right? You know, I mean, I'm saying this is what y'all say. I know my Bible is real. I know my Bible is true. Can anybody post? I'm going to just anything on top of my head, right? Second Corinthians 4 and 13. Can anybody post for me real quick? Can anybody post Second Corinthians 4 and 13 for me real quick? I, I, I just want to read it. The King James Version. Second Corinthians 4 and 13. Can anybody post it for me real quick? 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. Okay? Let's see if my Bible says the same thing. Okay, so before you guys post it, right? We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Can anybody post that for me? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. The KJV version. Because evidently they're making it seem like I'm reading a different version of the Bible. They're getting mad at me. No one is saying that I'm a false bro, fa false prophet, false brother. Nobody's saying that. They're saying, brother, you're lost. Brother, I don't want to uh, uh, preach love. I'll uh, preach this, preach that. Nobody is saying that what I'm saying is not biblical. Thank you, Kelgen. Okay. Wow, Kelgen. I got the same Bible that you got. That's what I just said. Without no, There's no Bible in my hand. There's my hands. And I'm holding my phone with my right hand. So, I mean, so clearly I'm reading the same version that you got. It says this. Thank you, Kelgen. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So we have the same Bible. So why are they getting mad at me? I'm just reading what's in the word. Can anybody give me Philippians 127? Keldrin, give me Philippians 127. Only let your speech become of the gospel. Only let your speech become of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 and 27. So y'all just posted the verse that I just said out my own mouth without having no Bible. So if I'm, so we just proved that I don't have a different Bible, right? I'm reading the same thing. I'm reading the same thing that y'all are reading. So why are they mad at me? What am I reading that's different? Jesus' name is Jesus in the Bible. God's name is God. The Bible say that any Christ won't confess that Jesus Christ came in flesh and blood. Jesus Christ came in flesh and blood. He is the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, the son of the living God. God is the creator, the father, the, the, the beginning, the end, the great I am, the God of Israel. I confess that. So I'm not an enemy of the cross. I'm against the devil. I'm against his demons. I'm against the false messiah, the false prophet, antichrist, all of them. I wish they all were burning in hell. Right? So why are they mad at me for what I speak? Philippians 127 says this. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, 
striving together for the faith of the gospel. You hear that? You see that? So I know that this verse said this. I just said it. Okay? So clearly there's only one King James Version. Right? And, and I'm telling you exactly what these, words, what these words say. So why are they mad at me that my Bible says what it says right now? I'm only repeating what I read. So clearly I can read, y'all, right? Do y'all agree? I'm not illiterate. Do y'all agree that I can read, right? Because I just said what my Bible says. Now, you if you want to come to where I'm at, I'll send my address, right? To where I'm at. You bring your Bible, because you guys don't like me. And I got my Bible. Okay, and and if what you're saying is I have a different version of God's word, and I'm making all these videos, stirring up all this ruckus. Come read a different version of the Bible. Okay? Show me what your Bible says and what mine says. To where what I'm speaking is a contrary version to the word of God. Does it not say to love your enemies in your Bible? Does it not say do good to them that hate you? Does it not say bless them that curse you? Does your Bible not say as well as mine say? Pray for them. What's why you didn't persecute you? Does, does our Bibles not say the same thing? So what am I saying that is contrary or contradicting to the truth of God's word? If I'm able to recite these things, you want me to you want me to break down, you want to go from, you want to go from Acts chapter 1 all the way to the end? What took place in Acts chapter 1? Christ died and he rose, right? And the apostles were 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 were, were gathered together and the angels told them to wait in Jerusalem. Right? They were told by Christ to wait. Acts 1, what happened? They drew lots because it was 11 of them. And they asked the Lord to appoint a 12th member with them. And the lot flew on Matthias. That's Acts chapter 1. Okay, just give you a little bit from every chapter. Acts 2 is what? The day of Pentecost. They waited 50 days from the Passover to Pentecost to wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, verse 2, the Holy Spirit descended upon them. 120, right? And they spoke in tongues. And all those in Jerusalem heard them speaking in their own languages. The wonderful works of God, right? And in Acts 37, people that were in attendance and listening were pricked to their heart. And they said, men and brethren, what should we do to be saved? And Peter is speaking and says, save yourself from the untoward generation. That's Acts chapter 2. Acts 3 is what? Peter performs the, the Holy Spirit, a miracle through him. The man that gave the beautiful. Okay? You can read that. Acts 4 is what? Okay? Them being persecuted. Right? Them being persecuted. Them, 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 um, you know, they get in, put in jail. Then they prayed in Acts 4 and 29, 30 verse. Those who were accompanying with them received the Holy Spirit as well as them. Then Acts 5, we get into Ananias the fire. Okay? And we, this is where it mentions Peter's shadow healing people. Right? Then Acts 6 is what? Then you got Acts 7, you got Acts 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? Read it for yourself. So what am I saying that's not true? What am I saying that's not true? What does Romans chapter 1 tells us? What does Romans chapter 1 tell us in Romans chapter 1? What does Hebrews chapter 1 tells us? Galatians, Ephesians. What was what was what was Paul telling the people what was Paul telling the believers in Galatians about? If anyone come and teach any other gospel, what Colossians tells you? If you be risen with Christ, do what? What Ephesians tells you? He gave us apostles and prophets. Right? And the rest of the callings. So, what am I saying that's not biblical? What am I saying that's not biblical? When did Abraham come along? His name was Abram in Genesis what? Chapter what? Chapter, I'll give you three chapters. Chapter 10, 11, 12. Which one was Abram mentioning first? I'm just asking. So, what, who, was, who was Ruth? What was her purpose? Was she not David's great-grandmother? Who was Xerxes? 
and Esther. What was the, what was that story about? Samson, Delilah. What did God tell Samson? What did the angel tell Samson's mother that he couldn't do? Cut his hair and do what? How did he break those rules that was given to him? When a lion was killed, what group, what, 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 what insects uh, made something inside of the, 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 um, the animal that was deceased? I mean, I'm just saying, what do I not know about the Bible? So why am I persecuted? And I'm reciting to you what took place in this Bible. Philippians tells us what? To have the mind of Christ. It said, think on these things that are lovely, things that are just. They even tell us that Christ was a man of no reputation. You see that? First Thessalonians, Paul tells us in the first chapter, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, right? In Corinthians chapter one, he tells us that it was reported to him that there was what going on in Corinth by the household of Chloe, right? In chapter five, what was reported to him in first Corinthians? In chapter 7 of Corinthians, what's he talking about? Marriage. Right? The virgins. Four, chapter 14. What's he talking about? 2 Corinthians chapter 2. What's he talking about? So I'm just, I mean, chapter 12. Where do you where do they mention in Corinthians the gifts that was given by the Holy Spirit? Where? Where is it mentioned in Corinthians where the Bible said. Be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Where does it mention that in Corinthians? Right? What was the book of Jude talking about? What was Jude talking about? Jude mentioned how the angels who didn't keep their first inhabitation were put into everlasting what? What was James talking about? What did James tell you in chapter 1? Right? What did he tell us in chapter 1 in the book of James? What else did he mention in the book of James? He said, if any of you are sick, go to the who of the church. He said, go to the elders of the church, right? So when, when Tabitha, whose surname was Dorcas in Acts chapter 9, died, she was, it was disciples that was around her. But why no one laid hands on her? But they called for Peter, who was nigh unto Joppa, Right? And he and Peter mentions in, in, in Peter in Peter's epistles, he mentioned in a chapter. I'm not going to tell you what chapter, but he mentions in the chapter, in the first verse, that he's an apostle and an elder. So didn't James say that if you sit, go to the elders of the church, then Peter, who was not too far from where Tabitha died, came and prayed for her. She came back to life. So, I mean, what am I saying that's not biblical? That's all I'm asking. What am I saying? It's not biblical. Did not Agabus prophesy that there was going to be a drought throughout the land? Was not Paul in Corinthians chapter, chapter 9 asking for help for the believers of Jerusalem? Was he not asking for help to send aid to them? I mean, I'm just asking. Who was Agabus in the New Testament? What did Agabus tell Paul? What did Agabus prophesy first? And then we hear Agabus again. How many daughters did Philip have that prophesied? Was it three or was it four? What city was he in after he left the Ethanoma treasure? And he stayed there until Paul came and stayed how many days with him? Was it five days, six days, or seven days that Paul stayed with um, Philip? I'm just asking. How many days did Paul stay with Peter? Was it 12 days, 13 days, or 14 days that Paul stayed with Peter? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Who was, who was, who was Mark to Barnabas? What does it mention Paul's nephew in the book of Acts? I'm just asking. 
So what am I saying that's that 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 making everybody so mad and so angry when I'm telling you what this Bible says? In what chapter in 2 Thessalonians do they mention the son of perdition? They say where they say he's gonna be sitting at, acting like God, as if he's God. Where they say he's gonna be sitting at? They say he's gonna come with all what? All power, signs, and, and what? Lying what? Lion jokes, lion colors, or lion miracles. Which one? You choose. Okay, go read it for yourself. Hebrews teaches us what? An important thing about angels, an important thing about God's ministers. In Hebrews, it mentions how his angels are servant spirits. Sent to minister to those who are going to receive what? Salvation. It say that as ministers, he made a flame of fire. Right? So, why did Paul mention the word thorn in his flesh? Where did Paul, amen, brother, where did Paul, why did Paul mention thorn in his flesh? Where was the word thorn in flesh mentioned in the Old Testament? With Paul being a Pharisee, one who was taught by Gamaliel. What chapter in the book of Acts was Paul's teacher mentioned? I'm just asking. The person who taught Paul, who he even says he learned at his feet. Where, what did he say in the book of Acts to the rest of the, the Jews? When they had the apostles and them on trial. What did, what did Paul's teacher say? Gamilio. And what chapter was this? What chapter did Stephen die? What chapter did they say set, up, set, set apart from a seven good men full of the Holy Spirit? Right? What chapter? Where was the men that Paul met that was only baptized in the name of John, uh, baptized uh, with John's baptism? And he said, they said, we haven't even heard of any other baptism. Then what did it do? What happened when Paul laid hands on them? What happened in when Philip was in Samaria? And even Simon himself, the sorcerer, believed. What did the Bible say? That they heard in Jerusalem and they sent who? The apostles heard and they sent who? Who were the two apostles they sent to, to Samaria? So the Holy, to see they would see the Holy Spirit. John and who? Peter, right? Because the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen. I mean, what do y'all want me to say? So what's the problem? What am I saying that's not biblical? Or have you just realized that you don't believe in God's word? Remember, you can go back and, and read these verses for yourself. You can pause this video once I, I, I share it and I finish it. And you can go and read it for your, and look at the verses for yourself. Remember, it's a video. Technology is amazing today. So that's all I'm saying, brothers and sisters. Okay, so let's move on. Easter, let's read where Easter came from. What is Easter? Easter is one of the principal holidays of Feast of Christianity. You see what they say on Google? I'm going to read these different things that Google tells you. Let me just show you this and how it's not biblical, right? First of all, it's not called Christianity. Okay? That's not even a word that's in the Bible. You see how reluctant Google is to tell you about what they don't know? That's the world for you. Pride is false strength. Oh, let me, yeah, Christianity started, uh, you see, they, they always want to know every answer. That's why they was mad at the, the, uh, the guy, uh, Dr. Fossey, when COVID was going around real strongly because he couldn't give him an answer. It was out of his control, but they wanted to hear something that gave them comfort. Oh, my uncle even told me that they had said that you could drink bleach. He told me he was going to drink it at one point in time. You see what I'm saying? They want to answer. They don't want to die. People want to live their life in sin. You talking about death? That's, that's not pleasant to them. Okay, what is Easter? Easter is one of the principal holidays or feasts of Christianity. It marks the resurrection of Jesus three days after the death by crucifixion. For many Christian churches, Easter is the joyful end of the Lutheran, Lutheran season and fasting and, and penance. Where is the word lething, seizing, or fasting and penance is mentioned in scripture? 
I mean, I'm I'm just asking for 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 Christian. You see what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters? This stuff is made up. Somebody who was an agent of Satan, a minister of Satan, wrote this stuff. Someone that Satan moved through the same way the Bible mentioned about false brethren, right? False apostles, deceitful workers, transforms of apostles of Christ. It's the same thing. Okay, well, it turns out our Easter actually began as a pagan festival, celebrating spring in the northern hemisphere long before the event of Christianity. See, they even telling you. That's why you got Easter bunnies and eggs and all this stuff. But people are so prideful that they were false Christians and they still wanted to partake in these fake pagan uh, holidays. So they start saying Jesus, the same thing with Christmas. Because think about it, you got to understand, why do y'all think that the people, why why do y'all think the people um, that, that are cl claiming to be Christian celebrate Christmas? And why do y'all think that they incorporate Jesus? It's simple. Let me tell y'all, y'all listening? Because false Christianity teaches you that you are different. This is why you dress up in suits and ties. This is why the reverence wear the, the Catholic, whatever, the priests, they wear the white collar. They want to stand out, right? You confess your sins at Catholic churches to these men who do the same things you do. They want to make themselves feel as if they're different than the rest of the world, right? So in, and if you're going to do the same thing the world does, then you got to come up with something that allows you to partake in it and, and gives you comfort and numbs your conscience and alters your perception of reality. So you say it's Jesus' birthday, because other non-believers celebrated it first. But because you're a non-believer too, but you're claiming to be a Christian and Christianity, you say it's Jesus Christ's birthday. Because that gives you comfort to participate in what other non-believers participate in. So you say, that's why you see Santa Claus, you see Jesus. Easter, you hear Easter bunny, eggs, and then you hear, they, then they, they have uh, uh, um, crosses and, and all other stuff. Palm Sunday. All the stuff that's nowhere in the Bible. Because these non-believers who are claiming to be Christians want to partake in these pagan holidays. Or many was already participating in these pagan holidays. And they became false Christians. So in order to deceive themselves and to give themselves comfort, they come up and say, oh, it's Jesus. He resurrected. Nowhere in the Bible were they calling the days of the week by the names that they're called by today. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that he died before the Sabbath or he rose on the Sabbath. In the book of Luke, it mentions the Sabbath, but there was many Sabbaths. Paul even tells you that. Okay? It didn't say the Sabbath day in the book of Luke around Christ's death. Okay? Because they had the Passover and and unleavened bread and all this other stuff, right? So these were just, it was different Sabbaths. You could read them in Leviticus in different parts of the Old Testament. It was different Sabbaths. They even had Sabbaths for after a certain amount of years. After seven years, there was a Sabbath. You see what I'm trying to say? So there was a Sabbath day, which was the seventh day, right? And then there were Sabbaths for different things that was mentioned in the Old Testament. That is biblical and that's facts. Okay, go read it for yourself. So when you look at the book of Luke, they mention that. Okay. So if you go to Luke uh, 23, verse 52, this is where Satan has caused people to might have a reason why they say, oh, he rose on Sunday. Right. Let's just, let's just look at it. Luke 23, 52. This man went unto Pilate. And begged to buy Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen. And laid it in a sepulcher. That was hewn in stone. When never man before was laid. And that day was a preparation. And the Sabbath day drew on. You see? So. What Sabbath day? Because there was many Sabbaths. You see? So they might look at that and say. Oh. But remember the word Sunday was never mentioned in the Bible. So they wouldn't accurately be uh, doing what they feel is, 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 is accurate because 
man came up with the days of the week and like why would it matter think about it if you're born in the world right and every day the sun rises and every day the, and every day the sun sets and the moon comes up and the moon goes down right so would life not do life still not go on so today is Wednesday, if today is the third day of the week by god right it's, there's no name for it cuz he didn't he never gave it a name in 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 the by in the old or new testament so why could the world still not go on when man created a system? Man created a calendar off the Roman calendar. So why would why can't man just say, uh, and, and you know, and it's another thing that's so funny is that they say, oh, Sabbath is a Saturday. But how would a Sabbath be Saturday when Saturday is a non-believer's word? Saturday was created by unbelievers and pagans. That name was not does not come from God. So you cannot say that Saturday is the Sabbath because a pagan or unbeliever said it. And and because your parents and their parents and their parents been calling these days the same way non-believers call them. You can't say that, okay, this is Sunday because it's this is Sunday of the week. By man saying that, not by God. God didn't say today is Saturday. That's what man is saying. God is not saying tomorrow is Sunday. God is not saying that tomorrow is the seventh day. That's what a man came up with. Y'all follow me? Is that hard to understand? I know y'all are intelligent, so that got to be easy to grasp. Constantine the Great came up with the names of the week. Non-believers, pagans, Gentiles, heathens came up with the system that we are functioning today. You understand? Nowhere was God involved, okay? The Bible says that what does the light have with darkness? So there's no way that these people have any connection with God who came up with these days and whatever. Man did that. Man made a strip club. Did God stop them? Man made Mercedes, Rolexes. You know, man commit uh, molestations and, 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 and rapings and robbers. Does God stop them? The Bible said in the book of Romans that Men are inventor of evil things. So they invented the names of the weeks. Clearly, the Bible tells you this. Okay? So, what I'm saying to you, does God stop everything? Did God stop David for sleeping with Bathsheba? Did God stop David for uh, killing Uriah? Did God stop David for numbering number, number, number the children of Israel? No. Did God stop Samson sleeping with Delilah, a prostitute? No. So clearly you see that God allowed things to be in this world but never can you alter his word you can make up stuff on google you can write books you can you can do podcasts you can do facebook lives you can do teachings you can do all that stuff that you want to do but one thing that you will never be able to touch is his word that's the only thing that gives us uh, um uh, uh salvation the only thing that teaches the truth about him everything else could be a lie but it, but god can't lie about himself and a lie can't be told about God from his word. A lie could be spoken out your mouth about God. But you can't go to the Bible who was telling you who was written from a perfect God with no flaws and no mistakes. You can't go in there and read a flaw about him, a mistake about him. You understand? So that's why the Bible said God's not a man that he shall lie. So that means that there's no lie in the word of God. Men lie because they're in darkness. They commit sins. They're in the flesh if they don't have the spirit of the living God, right? But God is not human to be affected by the flesh and darkness and what Satan can do to those that he possesses. You understand? So he doesn't tell lies or have mistakes or anything like that. So this is why you see the Bible has never changed. You could say King James was homosexual. He was racist. He had something to do with you know, Jamaica, back in the day, whatever the case may be. But he never put those behaviors, if they're true, or his influences in the word of God. Is that facts or is that fiction? Okay, let's move on. Whether you say slave masters told, uh, forced Christianity upon African, uh, Africans, they never, you never see in the Bible where it says that a slave master can have slaves. You never see in the Bible where it puts white people are black people more superior than the other race? Where? It never said that Hitler, blue eyes and blonde hair was, the, you know, like, come on, where? So clearly people were 
misinterpreting the Bible, was deceived and was possessed with many demons. Okay? These are the facts. Because the Bible say clearly that you can't be a men stealer. So what slave master was 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 forcing the true Christian faith on the slaves? They was forcing Christianity on the slave because it was brought down here by them. You understand? The Europeans. Now, so Paul says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Y'all hear that? Sabbath days. So you see Sabbath in the Bible written with a, um, as plural and singular. Okay? Because there was a Sabbath day, which was the seventh day of the week. And there were Sabbath days that had different meanings. Okay? Different purposes that God set in the Old Testament for the Jews. So you see what Paul say? He didn't say Sabbath day. He said Sabbath day days you see that so you read in the book of luke where they mention sabbath okay so people say oh yeah he rose on this day like first of all you're wrong wherever you feel because the, the the days the names of the week didn't come to way later so let me get back to what i was saying it's like a person putting a bite on the ground and spinning it what are we going to call it today? We're going to call it today Wednesday. Who was talking to the creator, which is God, and finding out what the actual day was? Is this day two God? Okay, I'm going to call it Tuesday. This day one God, I'm going to call it Monday. This day six, I'm going to call it Saturday. This day seven, okay, can I call it Sunday God? Yes, call it Sunday, my child. No. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They made it up. Today could be the first day of the week and they call it the sixth day of the week. They don't know. The world ain't going to stop because somebody calling it whatever. It's still it's the world. It's meant to revolve and function. Right now, the world can change Saturday and make it Sunday. And the world will still continue to go on. The world will adjust. Tomorrow, they, they could put an extra, you know what I'm saying? They, they could say, well, tomorrow is Monday. So basically, Monday could become Sunday. And two, Monday, uh, uh, Monday, Monday could become Monday could become Tuesday. Wednesday could become Thursday. Friday, the world going to still, like, it's not going to change anything. <laughs> you still got oxygen. You still got, you know, there's food, there's trees, there's grass. Life will still go on, right? This is my point. Okay? So, and uh, let's go back to the top. Okay? Well, it turns out Easter actually began as a pagan festival celebrated in spring in North Hemisphere long before I read it already. European settlers, particularly those from England, Germany, and Netherlands, brought their Easter traditions with them when they immigrated to the United States. These early customs were rooted in all Christian religious practices, as well as all pre-Christian pagan traditions that have been adapted over time. You see that? Adapted. It didn't start from the Bible. And it was brought by people who came preaching these false doctrines the ones who went out from us who wasn't of us just like in acts 15 they said you know um those who went out from us who who, who we gave no such command subverting your souls right so there's people who knew of god's word like and sapphire like the men in matthew 7 right paul saw even knew of what people call jesus lord right so Anybody for gain, material, riches, lucre, whatever, could make up in their mind whatever they want. Long as there's no one there to challenge them with the truth. Long as the world is superstitious and want to remain the same way as they are, no, they're not going to question it. Because what's the big deal of getting up one day out of the week? I'm saying how, how the unbeliever thinks, the false Christian, and got to hear about God. What big deal is it? To have to go put a few dollars in a collection plate. What big deal is that I got to sit at a place for one hour out of the week and hear a man sweat him uh, talk and sweat profusely, right? And, and 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 clap and play the piano and dance and watch a choir. You're going to a, a play. You're going to a, a a show at the churches. 
got the man shouting, din, 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 din. then you got to, and the Lord, and Jesus, and the Lord, he's going to bless y'all, he's going to, you, you getting all that, who's not going to go to that, it's entertaining, it's entertaining, you got the choir, you got benediction, you got the announcements, you got a guest speaker, you got your favorite girl you got a crush on, or the favorite guy you got a crush on. You know, it, it comes a, a, a competition with dressing, the best outfit, the best heels, the best suit. You know, you get your hair cut. You know, you go there to be seen. You feel good. Superstition. I just left church, y'all. I feel good. Right? However, now this is why I'm writing this. Okay? So let me go to Acts first. Acts 12. Now, about the time Harold the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, right? Remember, the enemies at that time of those who were Christians. He proceeded further to take those who were uh, against the, the, the Christian faith, the Jews. Please the Jews. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. You hear that? The days were, so they called it unleavened bread, Passover, right? And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarters and quarters of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. You hear that? After Easter. So explain to me how they're mentioning unleavened bread and mentioning Easter. Why would Jews celebrate Easter when they don't acknowledge Jesus Christ as being a Messiah? Easter is a false holiday that's accepted by false Christians saying that it's the day that what they falsely believe is the day Jesus Christ rose from the dead, right? So why would a king be concerned about a Jewish, I mean about a Christian holiday when he just killed a Christian named James? Wake up, brothers and sisters. Come on now. This is way before people were Christians. They were practicing these holidays. That's why it's mentioned in the Bible. They try to take it out other places. This is why it's mentioned here. Come on now. Why would he kill James? Imprison Peter. And then be concerned. About waiting. To after Easter. Okay. To bring him forth to the people. So wouldn't Easter be the, so you're telling me that, 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 that King Herod was a Christian? I'm just asking. So he, he killed the Christian. He arrested a Christian. Ain't going to wait till after the, the Easter. You notice he never mentioned anything about Christ in this scripture about Easter. Y'all notice that? See, they don't want to hear. That's why they don't like me, man. I understand now. I really see. I really get it. That's why I'm hated because God give me this truth that can't be contended with. Do y'all know they don't mention anything about they waited to after Christ. I'm going to keep reading to show you that even when G Peter got released from prison, nobody practiced anything with Easter. It was already a holiday that was already worshipped by, uh, by pagans and false believers. Remember, the Jews had the unleaving. The Greeks had the, the Easter. Okay. And. You notice he mentions, uh, he said uh, he killed James with a sword. So why would he wait to after Easter if he's if he's keeping Christian traditions and, and, and holy days, right? But he killed James and imprisoned Peter. But he's going to wait and show respect to a religion and to a religious Messiah, day of resurrection, and he just killed James, and he just imprisoned Peter, make it make sense, guys. That's all I'm saying, okay? It's right here. And when he had a, a prepper apprehended him, I read that. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and, he, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains 
fell off him from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And was not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, forthwith, forthwith the angel de departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of cer uh, a certainty, certainty that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all expectation of the people and the Jews. So why would they keep Easter? <laughs> he said, deliver me out of his hand. Come on, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, y'all been lied to. Everything Christ said about the false teachers and the false messiahs and the false prophets and the false doctrine, this is what we, we, we are living in that generation, okay? But the word of God always tells us the truth and gives us all the answers. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose short name was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. As, and as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhonda. Uh, Rhoda. And when, when she, she knew Peter's voice and opened, she opened not the gate for gladness and ran in and told Peter and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said to her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, if it is, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, Go, show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him, and found him not. He examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, having made blastings at the king, chamberlains, and their friends desired peace because their country was nourished by the king, by the king's country. You see what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? So where did it mention once he got released from prison, when he went to the sister's house, they were all praying unto God. What did it say that they were celebrating Easter? What did it say that after Peter was released, he went in? Because wouldn't it be a sin for him not to participate in something that was set by God? Right? Wouldn't it be a sin to not do those things? So why didn't it give us instructions and tell us that Peter went and celebrated Easter with the brethren and he stayed with them and he celebrated Easter, the day of the Lord. And this happened, right? This happened at that time where you see it mentioned by Herod. Come on, brothers and sisters, because it wasn't anything to do with us. It was already taking place way before we became Christians. Come on now. It was already part of it. Okay. Acts 20 and 16. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. You see that? Paul wanted to go back to Jerusalem when he was traveling for the day of Pentecost. What they were keeping. Okay. So what does it mention Easter or Christmas or any of these pagan holidays? It doesn't. Colossians 2 and 16. Right. I read this already. Therefore, let no man judge you in meat or drink or respect it or any holy day or new moon or on any Sabbath days. You see that? So that's clearly it, brothers and sisters. There's nowhere where Easter was mentioned for us. Why would Herod kill James, imprison Peter? And say he's going to, you know, it pleased the Jews to do so. And he was going to keep him in prison until after Easter. Because Herod celebrated Easter. That's right. These were pagan holidays. It, it symbol, you got to look up what Easter meant. Right? Simulation of birth and, you know, all this stuff. Eggs and, you know, I guess an egg. You know, I, I don't know. Some weird stuff. But that's what I'm trying to tell you all. Brothers and sisters. Nowhere did a Christian celebrate Easter. And nowhere is it meant for us to celebrate those who are doing so are false believers. And that's why they get mad at me. The same way they got mad at Christ. Because we spoke the truth. And we speak the truth. And they don't want to hear it. And they don't want to accept it. Okay? And they make it seem, the devil make them seem like we're 
doing something wrong because they're being trouble. But the same way you have thoughts in your mind about many things that go on in your life. You you know, that's why the Bible talk about evil surmising. I want you to look this word up. Look up the word surmising. Okay? Surmise. Okay? And then look up the word evil. Okay? So when you look up the word surmise, you look up the word evil. And I understand what that means. It means to come up with things without having proof, without having evidence. Thinking these things. You see? Evil surmising. So the devil will make you say, something's about that guy, Ronald. But you do that with everybody else. So it's nothing for people to think that about me when you feel, oh, this person, they sneaky. You know, I don't like them. Especially when you're a gossiper. Especially when you talk behind people back. So it's easy for you to put me in that category. Right? I love you all. God bless.